afternoon. Oops, this is Dr. McDaniel. Um, hope everyone can hear me. I forgot to put my mic in. Let me just let me add the mic because I don't know how great the the audio is without the mic. So today is Monday, July first. Probably better. Today is Monday, July 1st, and um, I'm back in the States now. Uh, I've been away for a couple of weeks, for 12 days exactly, and I've been filming, and then I loaded everything up for the last 12 days. So I hope uh, if you're viewing today's visit some point in time later today that you check out the previous um, information given over the last two weeks. I've been doing a progressive series on uh, cervical cancer prevention and the different modes and mechanisms and what to do each step along the way. So cervical cancer is an infectious cancer. It's not an inherited cancer. It's not genetic cancer. It's infectious. It's due to infection with a sexual infection called human papillomavirus or HPV. There is a vaccine that helps decrease the risk of being infected or having symptoms from infection <coughs> with seven of the 14 high risk strains of HPV. So 14 strains of HPV are the most likely <coughs> sorry, to produce severe precancer cancer changes within a couple of years of infection if left to their own devices. Uh, that's the first uh, line of defense. The second line of defense is doing pap smears. Pap smears and exfoliation of the cervix and the cells are evaluated. A co-test is when both the pap smear and the viral culture for the HPV presence or absence is obtained. That uh, increases the believability rate of the pap. And that's because the pap smear is a screening test, it's not a diagnostic test. So when we get a pap result back, it can either come back normal, abnormal, or somewhere in between where the cells look weird, but they can't really tell us if they look like they're precancerous or no. So if the cells come back looking like they're precancerous, with or without the viral activity present, or if they're middle of the road, they just look weird, we call that ASCUS. And that stands for atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance. And if the pap comes back atypical but the virus is present, then it's recommended to have a diagnostic test because the pap smear tells us if we can afford to ignore someone or if we need to look closer to potentially evaluate them for precancerous changes. If it comes back just plain old looking precancerous or atypical with the viral activity present, then it's recommended to have a diagnostic test done. That diagnostic test is called a colposcopy. Colpo means cervix and scopy means to look. So this is just a large magnifying glass that we use to look at the cervix. And under magnification, we identify thickened irregular abnormal tissue changes or abnormal blood vessel vascular patterns because abnormal growth garners an abnormal blood supply. And that allows us to direct biopsies to specific areas on the cervix that we otherwise would not have identified as being suspicious for irregular cell changes or growth with the naked eye. Now, there are a variety of tissue pattern and abnormal blood vessel vascular changes that are, have been used to kind of give a guideline for when the biopsy should be taken and how to correlate them with what the result will actually be. Now historically, it was often thought that one could just do a colposcopy, just look under magnification. We put acetic acid on the cervix. That acetic acid allows us to identify irregular tissue patterns and blood vessel vascular patterns uh, more specifically. So we used to think that we could just look with magnification using acetic acid and that would allow us to determine whether or not this lady needed a biopsy at all. 
So it used to be you could look and if she didn't need a biopsy, you said, okay, you don't need a biopsy, come back in six months, or it used to be three months, come back in three months, we'll repeat the pap smear. But that um, was put to rest and um, due to research. So the research showed, and it makes sense if you think about it, if you do a biopsy and the more biopsies you do, the more likely the chance that you'll come up with a diagnosis of abnormality present if the pap said there was abnormality present. <clears throat> So the research showed that even if you don't see any obvious vascular changes or tissue abnormalities under the magnification of the colposcope, you should still at least do one biopsy from each of the four quadrants of the cervix. So the cervix looks like a donut, and we divvy that into four quadrants, so four quarters, and we look systematically in each of the four qu quarters or quadrants for tissue changes, abnormal thickening of the cervical tissue, abnormal coloration, abnormal features of blood vessel or vascular changes. And that's because abnormal growth garners an abnormal blood supply. So we can often correlate that there is HPV activity present if the cervix has kind of a cloudy, misty look to it, either in patches or in general. We call that acetyl white changes. Now if there's thickening, um, it can be leukoplakia, and leukoplakia literally means just a thick white chunk of cervical tissue, or um, um, just a thicker, not a kind of a misty, foggy, cloudy look to the to the coloration change. So thickened tissue areas, acetyl white and leukoplakia, they often correlate with benign changes, so what we would call flat condylomatous or genital warts of the cervix, or to HPV effects, but not full-on precancerous changes, and occasionally they will correlate with very early precancerous changes, or what we call low-grade changes. <coughs> Sorry. Now, blood vessel or vascular changes more often correlate with dysplastic precancerous changes, and the more convoluted or complex the vascular changes, the more likely the possibility of severe precancerous changes or high grade changes. So, vascular changes, we will often say that it looks like this lady has punctation, which means it just looks like polka dots or stipling on the cervix or it looks like she has mosaicism, which um, when I was a resident, we were told mosaicism should look like a plate of spaghetti. So just little streaks of vascular changes all in kind of like a worm, uh, a, a clump of worms. So the more complex the blood vessel changes, the more um, severe the, va the tissue changes or precancerous changes usually are, sorry. <coughs> So we direct the biopsy specifically to areas of thickening, acetyl white, leukoplakia, and vascular changes, punctation, uh, simple punctation, or dense complex punctation, and then you can have mosaicism, and you can have simple mosaicism or more complex mosaicism. So it's just a, in accordance with how dense the pattern for each of those vascular changes looks. So regardless, if you see absolutely nothing in a, quad a quadrant, so one quadrant of the cervix has absolutely nothing, it's still recommended to do one biopsy from that area because over 60% of the time, there will be some tissue changes present. I'll go more into the findings, potential findings of the colposcopy and how that's managed tomorrow. So this is Dr. McDaniel. Thank you for joining me. Today is Monday, July 1st, 2019. This is GYN Corner. Please check out the YouTube channel. That's also called GYN Corner. As I stated previously, it's behind the Facebook because these I do live and the YouTube I have to load up when I have free time. Uh, but everything is nicely organized on the YouTube channel. No so much on the Facebook page. But thanks for joining. I hope everyone's learning uh, new and informative uh, information about uh, their health and GYN Corners is, is all things health related for women. Thanks a lot. Have a great rest of the day. I'll be back tomorrow. Bye.